You're listening to today's inspirational message on the book of Titus with Dan Irvin. This is Kurt Bjorklund. Welcome to Five Good Minutes. Today, Titus 3 and Dan Irvin, who serves as our campus pastor, our Strip District campus, and is part of a great staff team here at Orchard Hill, will be leading our time. Enjoy. So here we pick up, we're in chapter three of the book of Titus, and if you've been with us on this journey through Titus so far, you know that Paul is writing to Titus, who has been tasked with going into the island of Crete, going onto this island and, and revamping, rebuilding this Christian community that has gone astray. Paul is writing to Titus in this moment and trying to paint a picture in this chapter, in chapter three, of what life with Christ is could really be like, what this new community, this new humanity on this island could look like if people really started to truly lay down their lives and follow Jesus. And so we pick it up. This is Titus chapter three. We'll look at verses one through three today. Paul says this, remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and to always be gentle toward everyone. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. At one time, we were living in the way that these people were living too. This is Paul's, Paul's plea, Paul's uh, in sharing with Titus. He is saying, do you remember what it was like before you knew Christ? And now you have an opportunity to model something that was maybe modeled for you and sharing with them a life in Christ that is better, that is better than any kind of life that they've been living or any kind of communal living experience that they think they've had in the way they've set up society and structure. This this way of living with Christ is better. And Paul is imploring Titus to share with this early church to let your actions, let your life do the talking. And for years, I, I've been involved as a coach now with my own kids, sports teams and prior working with students and student ministry, coaching various teams and the best teams that I've ever been involved in, the best teams I've ever been around are teams that have leaders and coaches that let their actions do the talking. It's not their talk that's big. It's the way that they practice. It's the way that they show up early and stay late. It's the way that they They live their lives in the moment, in the game, in the practices that influences others around them. And, you know, this this is one thing that is worth noting here in verse one is, as Paul says, remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities. I don't think he's talking here about just turning a blind eye to things that to injustice, to ways in which rulers and authorities are abusing their power. I think that there's plenty of other cases and instances in the Bible where injustice is stood up to. Injustice is, is something that Jesus didn't stand for. And it's certainly something that here Paul is not saying, turn a blind eye when, when this is happening. But what he is saying is, can we live our lives in such a way where the rulers and the authorities take note because we are living such model lives that they say, what is different about these people and their lives? And that will be the thing that will ultimately change the society that they were living in. And so maybe in your context today, this could look like taking some time to really consider the way that you engage at work or as a student, or you know, thinking about maybe a boss or a coworker that makes showing up challenging and how you engage with that person, what it could mean if you engaged in a different way, in a way that pointed them towards life. You know, Paul is is again calling his audience here as he writes to to Titus to share with others to remember what it was like at one time when they were without Christ, before they knew Christ. There's a, a great poem actually written by a, a, a Pittsburgh man who was an Episcopal priest in the 1960s. The poem's called I Stand by the Door, and the author is Sam Shoemaker. I'll read the first couple lines of the poem here. It says, I stand by the door. I neither go too far in nor stay too far out. The door is the most important door in the world. It is the door through which men walk when they find God. There is no use my going way inside and staying there when there are still so many outside as they, as much as I, crave to know where the door is. Crave to know where the door is. Would you consider today, who are the people in your life that are craving to know where the door to God is? 
and pray, take a moment to pray that God might give you an opportunity to help these people that are in your life find that door. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day. 